Pedersons. Welcome back to another episode of San Diego Prep Insider, Christian Pedersen, Colton Toll. We are now in what, what the seventh-ish week of the high school season, maybe the eighth by the time you're watching this, but we are in the point where the statistical production and results has yielded us enough that power rankings of official nature are coming out. The way that this all works out, during the regular season, the voters vote, the voters being the secretive cabal of sports writers and digital and media, old-timey personalities all coming together to email John Matthew their popularity picks or whatever the hell you want to argue on Twitter about. But none of that actually amounts to anything because none of that goes anywhere in terms of actual seeding. Uh, CIF has a formula that they use that has been hotly debated, but they use it and it comes out after week six of the season with the official rankings. Some of this looks a little bit different than others. Um, but before we get to any of that, let's get to a quick sponsor, uh, a quick word from our sponsor, the U.S. Army. Thank you again to the U.S. Army for their support of everything we do here at SDPI. They keep everything free, so we don't have to charge or beg or ask or recommend you pay for subscription fees. Um, they also pay for the intern to go to a vote in other rooms. Let's talk about Division Two now. This one required... <laughs> uh, Colton, I don't know if you... Uh, I don't know if you know the song, One of These Things is Not Like the Other. One of These Things just doesn't belong. Uh, <laughs> does that uh, ring any bells from growing up in your youth, um, from Sesame Street? I don't want to throw shade, but I will say that of this looking at this Mount Carmel, Mira Mesa, Otay Ranch, Central Union, Valley Center, Granite Hills, La Jolla, Ramona being the top eight, you can read the rest of the, their uh, seeing a team that is one in three on the year and just lost to the team that is one above them by a sizable margin that doesn't feel statistically anomalous, you stop and wonder. But this one will be a great case of debate for strength of schedule this year. Otay Ranch, like I said, they have taken uh, really, really, really hard L's to, they lost to Madison, Helix, Mira Mesa. Teams that are two teams that are bound for the open division and Mira Mesa is a top division two team. Uh, they have beat San Diego. Handily. So I guess they have proven that they can win the games that they are like statistically supposed to win and that they can play really tough teams. I don't know that if that is them just clogging up a spot and setting up for a road loss against some actual, you know, not I, I like, I don't want this to sound like shame, but it just, it, it raises a lot of questions when there's a spot being occupied by that. The rest of Otai's season, they've got uh Sweetwater, modern day East Lake and Benita Vista. So modern day Catholics, probably another one that's going to contribute huge into that strength of schedule. Um, past that, though, they should pick up a couple more wins. I think they can tread water and be a sub-500 team that ends up with a home playoff game, which to me is a really, really interesting way to go about this season. For the number one team, though, right now, Mount Carmel, uh, congrats and props to Wesley and his staff for not just – being good with Jaden Virgin last year, but actually coming in and installing a full program and a system and a concept that has yielded really good results. Um, rest of the season they, the, for Mount Carmel is Vista, Del Norte, RB, Poway, Westview. I think Poway is a really tough game, but I think that that's a, even if you take an L there, you get rewarded with strength of schedule. The rest of those seem winnable or good competition wise this could be an eight and two mount carmel team and if you got an eight and two mount carmel team as one of the one two or three seeds i don't see why you would vote against them uh as a playoff favorite same with mira mesa looking at the early one or the early loss for them was helix they got madison this week which will be a huge one because madison's an open division team and then the rest of the season is san diego christian patrick henry la jolla they could also get out of here with a lot of wins. And, you know, I think that for as much confusion as we're talking about, this also could be the one division that is the most clear right now for me. 
because this is to me it's Mount Carmel Mira Mesa. They both have conceivably winnable rest of the years that could you know maintain that gap and then sure central might come for them maybe but probably not valley center i don't see a ton of shakeups there i see shakeups you know three through 12 and i see plenty of, of room for improve a room for you know drama and change and plot but to me this one's locked in with one and two and i don't think one and two changes bar you know except for some major upsets uh should something like that happen colton who are some teams though that may be down in that four through 12 that you're looking at um in terms of of what's going on the rest of the season yeah central is always going to be a team that's in the mix obviously they're known they have that big big win against mount carmel week one like i said before week one wins week one in general is just a very weird week it's your first game action besides a scrimmage you haven't been maybe a month in pads at the most but, you know, that's a that's a big win. That's Mont Mon Carmel's only loss. Uh, they beat a really good Point Loma team we talked about last video. So those are two huge wins for Central. They lost to a Palm Desert team in overtime, and then they, they lost to a Grand Hills team by 35, which is a, also a very good team. But coming up, I think a big test, obviously, tomorrow night they play Mounted Day Catholic. That's going to be – that's a game a lot of people have had circled for a while. This Central team, no matter what, if you have to go out there and play with a two-hour drive, three-hour drive, however long it takes – it is always going to be tough. Central is going to run the ball. They know how to block. Their lines are always good. The tomorrow's game is going to be a big test of what they really are. Even if they lose, if it's a close game, I really think that shows a lot of what they are, a team that could sneak up into that top four, bearing a couple of things. They finish out with their league, Calexico and Perio Brawley. So, obviously, a very winnable schedule down the stretch besides this modern day game. This will be a huge test for them. I love Granite Hills. I think Granite Hills, they do it right every year. Granite Hills always has a good program. Big wins this year. Also, a couple losses, big wins against uh, Valhalla, Oceanside, Eastlake. And they've also beat the Central game, like I said. Coming off a three-point to a Madison team, like we said, that's going to be an open division team and an open division team that's going to compete for it. A big loss to Poway, who is one of the top seeds in uh, Division One. Those are good losses to have because those are losses that, yeah, you lost the game, but those weren't absolute blowouts. They were proven they could hang with bigger divisions. They've beaten the teams they're supposed to beat. Granite's always doing it right. They play Christian. Grossman still can even finish out with Helix. That Helix game is going to be huge for momentum, for a strength of schedule. If they can pull off an upset there, that could push them into the top four. There's definitely still teams besides those one, two spots. I think everyone in the middle is still playing for that three and four seed. Uh, with them, also Ramona. Ramona's a team that started off hot. A lot of people like them. That week three loss against Poway. Poway, Madison, Fallbrook, that's just a bad stretch of losses. They're really good teams. The Fallbrook loss obviously shocked a lot of people. A game they probably should have won. Again, that probably is why they're ranked so low right now because of that loss. They play the number one seed in Division Three this week in RBV. Finish out with Escondido, San Pasqual, Oceanside and Valley Center. So still a lot of time to make up ground for that loss, but they ought to do it sooner than later because right now they're two and three. A couple of big losses down the stretch though could put them in position for a potential home playoff game. And finally, I want to go San Marcos who started off with big wins against Andrew Bernardo. A seven-point loss to Mira Mesa, that's also a really good loss to have to the number two seed, a team that a lot of people expect this division to run through. Beat Steel Canyon, beat Oceanside, a bad loss to LCC. LCC is always a good program, Division One. Finishing out with San Pasqual, Carlsbad, El Camino, Torrey Pines, and Mission Hills. We all know what league they're in, the most competitive league in San Diego. Stealing a couple wins that could be huge for them. Obviously, the strength of schedule is going to play into their favorite but I would like to see them win one, two, maybe even three games in their league to try and push them up more. But, yeah, those are the teams I'm looking out for in this division. Middle ground, a lot of movement, a lot of teams still playing for that three and four seed, trying to get a bye, trying to get a home playoff game. Appreciate it, Colton. We will uh, definitely have the updates that everyone can follow for how the CIF rankings are put together every week and how the actual playoff seedings are going. You can stay tuned with us. Thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you to the U.S. Army for all their support of SD Prep Insider. We got all the other divisions to go check out so that you guys uh, can see what other schools are up to in the playoff seedings. Let's uh, move on for us, though, to recording the Division One. One Colton. We'll see you in just a second.